Welcome to this first program of Catholic Family News Media. I'm John Veneri, editor of Catholic Family News, and this is the first of a series of short video presentations that we plan to produce. Uh, ideally, we hope to produce one a week. We want to post one at 11 o'clock every Wednesday, 11 o'clock in the morning, Eastern Time. That's the plan. We'll see how that pans out. Um, and I will say that I had actually chosen a different topic, a little more upbeat and positive topic for the first presentation. But <laughs> something happened yesterday that forced me to change my focus. On January 19th, 2015, Pope Francis gave a series, another series of off-the-cuff remarks in an in-flight interview, in-flight press conference to journalists, this time the flight from Manila to Rome. And of course, there's always one bombshell from these press conferences that causes tremendous consternation and confusion worldwide. You know, it's the opposite of what we see in the Gospel, where our Lord told Peter to confirm the brethren. These off-the-cuff remarks, these reckless remarks, actually confuse and scandalize the brethren. It's one of the many reasons that the popes of the past did not make casual, off-the-cuff remarks. Because the words of the Pope are taken seriously. <laughs> at, least, at least they used to be. Um, but the Popes of the past, when they made a pronouncement or made a statement, it was noble, it was precise, it was becoming the dignity of their office and the seriousness of the office that they hold. Anyway, the quote that hit the headlines, and I'm sure you know the quote I'm getting to, it is the headline that reads, Pope says Catholics need not breed like rabbits. So let's take a better look at this quote. Let's, let's take a look at what happened. During his trip to Manila, Pope Francis did favorably mention Humane Vitae. And on the flight back, when he gave this interview, he did say some pretty good things about uh, the fact that husbands and wives should be open to life. I mean, that was all there. But then he said this. He says, this does not mean that the Christian must make children in a series. In other words, produce them one after another. I rebuked a woman some months ago in a parish who was pregnant eight times with seven C-sections. But do you want to leave seven orphans? That's basically what he said. This is to tempt God. Paul VI speaks of responsible parenthood, close quote. Now, this is unprecedented, really, that a pope would rebuke a woman who is really practicing heroic virtue in bringing these children into the world, and then he would boast to journalists that he made this rebuke. He goes on. He says, that example I mentioned, sure, this is a little later in the interview, that example I mentioned shortly before about that woman who was expecting her eighth child and already had seven who were born with cesareans, this is an irresponsibility. But the woman will say, no, but I trust in God. But God gives you methods. God gives you methods to be responsible. Some think that, excuse me if I use the word, that in order to be good Catholics, we have to be like rabbits. No, responsible parenthood. And then he goes on to talk about marriage groups and that type of thing. Now, Catholics around the world were shocked by this statement. A conservative, not even a traditionalist, a conservative theologian whom I know, Here's what he said about Francis' statement. He says, this is disgraceful. This is insulting and demeaning as being like rabbits, those families that make big sacrifices in order to be generous with God's gift of life, of new life. No pope has ever spoken like this. That is true. No pope has ever spoken like this. Um, why is it that the more our church leaders talk about human dignity, the more they degrade ecclesiastical dignity. This is really street corner, ignoble talk, being like rabbits. And anyone who has a thimble size amount of common sense will know that if you talk like this to journalists, this is the hot item that the journalists are going to trumpet, pick up and trumpet to the world.
And Francis knows this. This is the amazing thing. Francis knows this. In his book, Heaven on Earth, the book that he co-wrote with Rabbi Skorka, he says in that book that when he was Archbishop of Buenos Aires, he purposely did not give communion during public masses because he was concerned, he says, that an unsavory politician would come up, receive communion from his hands, someone from the press would be there, snap a photo, it would be in the paper the next day, given the impression that Bergoglio supports this politician. Okay, he knows this. He knows he has to be super sensitive in dealing with the press. Why then is he reckless now? Has he forgotten that a Catholic leader has to be extremely careful in dealing with the press? Or are these reckless remarks intentional with the calculated intent of opening the door of furthering the conciliar revolution in the realm of morals. We've had it in doctrine, we've had it in liturgy, now we're getting it in morals. And as I would hope to be generally known, but I don't think it is generally known, Pope Francis is a huge fan of the late Cardinal Martini from Milan one of the most liberal, modernist, progressivist prelates of contemporary age. Now I'm going to read off some of the things that Caldo Martini was in favor of. These are things you can get from his own writings and from, the, and, and from his interviews. Caldo Martini encouraged opening up reception of the Eucharist for divorced and remarried Catholics. He, he counseled against what he called discrimination of divorced and remarried Catholics regarding the Eucharist. Does this sound familiar? Does this sound like the Synod? He favored homosexual civil unions. He called for a more collegial and synodal approach to church government. He insisted that you can't make God a Catholic God. Okay, we see more things. The Synod last year and a more synodal approach and all the confusion that caused. And Francis himself saying in one of his earlier interviews that he doesn't, he, 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 says, he says that God is not a Catholic God. We go on. Martini claimed that the Catholic Church is 200 years behind the times. He said that our rights, R-I-T-E-S, our rights and our dress are pompous. Martini favored the descent of Humane Vitae from the Austrian and German bishops. He says, he's basically said this is a path for us uh, for the future. And of course, Martini was ecumenical to the gills. Yet on the first anniversary of Cardinal Martini's death, September 2nd, 2013, Pope Francis publicly praised Martini as a father for the whole church, a prophetic figure, and a man of discernment and peace. Now let me ask you, would you call Martini a man of discernment and peace? Would you call him a father of the whole church, believing the things that he did? Would you call him a prophetic figure? Pope Francis did. He did so publicly. As Pope, this has huge implications. Now, we're making these videos short, so I'm going to bring this one to a close. And in the next video, <coughs> excuse me, next time around, we're going to talk about the sacrament of marriage, the primary purpose of marriage is the beginning and education of children, the secondary aspect of marriage, which is the mutual love and help between spouses, and also the fact that these methods of spacing children, for example, natural family planning, uh, in the vast majority of cases, it is not permissible to use this method on a permanent basis. So to close, for, say, for, for years I've been saying that we are only in the early stages of the Vatican II revolution. There are many more revolutionary changes to come. And I think all the indications are there that Pope Francis is a man who wants to further the conciliar revolution. You have to remember in 2005, he was the contender against Pope Benedict, Cardinal Ratzinger. It was the Martini power block that supported Bergoglio 
to the papacy in 2005 with the idea that if he is elected, he will bring about a more martiniizing of the church. And Pope Francis, since being elected, does talk along the same lines as Cardinal Martini. So these are the type of topics that we will deal with in future programs. I hope you'll join us. For Catholic Family News Media, I'm John Veneri. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.